Good morning dear student I am Dr Rekha Jivne professor and head department of physiology In my previous lecture I discussed with you regulation of blood pressure In regulation of blood pressure I discuss short term regulation of blood pressure and intermittent regulation of blood pressure Hope all of you understand my lecture Today I am going to discuss with you long term regulation of blood pressure local regulation of blood pressure and hormonal regulation of blood pressure at the end of my lecture you must able to answer the following direct method of regulation of blood pressure indirect method of regulation of blood pressure osmoreceptor adh mechanism atrial natriuretic peptide mechanism hormonal regulation of blood pressure and the local regulation of blood pressure In previous lecture we saw regulation of blood pressure can be done by nervous mechanism renal mechanism hormonal mechanism and the local mechanism nervous mechanism we already discussed in the previous lecture today we are going to discuss renal mechanism hormonal mechanism and the local mechanism renal mechanism these are the most important mechanism which has ability to bring back blood pressure to the normal level in response to any alteration of blood pressure this mechanism get initiated slowly takes 3 to 10 days to activate fully it last over periods of days to year renal mechanism work even when nervous mechanism adapt to the new pressure as a nervous mechanism loses the sensitivity for the altered pressure changes this renal mechanism regulate the blood pressure long term regulation of blood pressure in long term regulation of blood pressure kidney plays main role in main role in control of blood pressure by the following mechanism first is the direct mechanism renal fluid mechanism or also called as the auto regulation of blood pressure it is done by regulation of extracellular fluid volume indirect mechanisms are the two types these are the renin angiotensin mechanism and second one renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism renin angiotensin mechanism is operated by secreting enzyme renin from juxta glomerular apparatus of kidney renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism by indirectly secreting aldosterone from the adrenal cortex osmoreceptor adh mechanism stimulation of osmoreceptors present in hypothalamus atrial natriuretic peptide mechanism it is operated by the stimulation of the stretch receptors of the atria now we are going to discuss the direct mechanism in the direct mechanism first we are going to discuss the renal fluid mechanism or the auto regulation of the blood pressure renal body fluid feedback mechanism takes several hours to show any significant response this mechanism operate very powerfully to control atrial pressure over days weeks and month the effectiveness of this mechanism become steadily greater with time as long as kidney function is unaltered this mechanism overcome the disturbances that tend to alter the atrial pressure such as increase total peripheral resistance over a long period and thus are able to control the blood pressure the renal body fluid system correct the blood pressure by causing appropriate changes in blood volume through diuresis and natriuresis diuresis mean the excretion of water natriuresis ex- 
excretion of the salt or the sodium. When the blood pressure rises too high, the kidney excrete increased quantity of the sodium and water because of the pressure natriuresis and the diuresis respectively. As a result of increased renal excretion, the extracellular fluid volume and the blood volume both decreases until blood pressure returns to normal and the kidney excrete normal amount of the salt and the water. When the blood pressure falls too low, the kidney reduces the rate of sodium and water excretion and over a period of hours to days, there is a decrease in blood pressure, reabsorption from the renal tubules, increase in extracellular fluid volume and the blood volume, increase in cardiac output and the blood pressure restored to the normal level. If for example, person, person drink enough water and eat enough salt to increase the blood volume, the blood pressure will return to its previous level. The sequence of event in order to occurrences during the control of blood pressure are Adequate intake of water and salt, decrease excretion of the water and salt by kidney, increase extracellular fluid and the blood volume, increase venous return, increase cardiac output, rise in the arterial pressure. When we summarize the renal body fluid, uh, renal body fluid system for control of arterial pressure, then whenever there is the decrease in arterial blood pressure, there occur the decreased blood supply to the kidney, resulting to the renal ischemia. Whenever there is a decreased blood supply to the kidney, the GFR decreases, glomerular filtration rate decreases. As soon as glomerular filtration rate decreases, there occur the retention of the salt and the water. When the retention, retention is there, there is the increase in the extracellular fluid volume. When fluid volume increases, blood volume also increases. When the blood volume increases, there is increase in cardiac output and increase in the blood pressure. So this mechanism is directly, it is it is directly regulate the blood pressure and predominantly there is the role of the kidney in the regulation of the blood pressure by the renal body fluid system. Now we come to the indirect mechanism. In the indirect mechanism, first of all, renin angiotensin system. Renin along with the angiotensin form this hormonal system. Renin it is the enzyme. It is secreted by the juxtaglomerular cells of the kidney. When there is the ischemia or less blood supply to the kidney, juxtaglomerular cells of the kidney secrete the renin. Angiotensinogen cells, these angiotensinogen it is secreted in liver. Angiotensin converting enzyme, it is present in the lung. Now, renin angiotensin system is also known as the RAS. According to this system, when there is a reduced renal blood flow, the juxtaglomerular apparatus secretes the renin. This renin, it activates the angiotensinogen which is present in the liver. Angiotensinogen then activate the angiotensin 
वन एंजियोटेंसिन वन इन द लंग इन इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ एंजियोटेंसिन कन्वर्टिंग एंजाइम कन्वर्ट द एंजियोटेंसिन वन इन टू द एंजियोटेंसिन टू नाउ एंजियोटेंसिन टू इट हैज द पोटेंट वेसो कंस्ट्रिक्टर एंड देर इज द मेन थ्री रोल और थ्री फंक्शन ऑफ एंजियोटेंसिन टू फर्स्ट इज द वेजो कंस्ट्रिक्शन इनडायरेक्टली इट सीक्रीट द एल्डेस्टिर फ्रॉम द एड्रेनल कॉटेक्स थर्ड वन इज द वॉटर एंड इलेक्ट्रोलाइट रिटेंशन वेन देर इज द वेजो कंस्ट्रिक्शन वेजो कंस्ट्रिक्शन इन द आर्ट्रीज एंड द वेन इट कॉजेज द इंक्रीज इन द ब्लड प्रेशर एंजियोटेंसिन टू इनडायरेक्टली इट इज स्टूमलेट द एड्रेनल कॉटेक्स वेन द एड्रेनल कॉटेक्स इज स्टूमलेटेड इट सिक्रीट्स द एल्डेस्टर द वेन द एल्डेस्टर इज सिक्रीटेड इट 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 कॉजेज द रिटेंशन ऑफ द सॉल्ट एंड द वॉटर सो एंजियोटेंसिन टू इनडायरेक्टली इनडायरेक्टली कॉजेज द वॉटर एंड इलेक्ट्रोलाइट रिटेंशन second function of angiotensin 2 is the water and the electrolyte retention mean angiotensin 2 directly or indirectly causes the retention of salt and water when there is retention of salt and water increase blood volume is there less excretion of the salt and water water is there so if less excretion of salt and water is there water and electrolyte retention when the electrolyte water and electrolyte retention is there there is increase in the blood volume when the blood volume increases increase in the blood pressure occurs or blood pressure comes toward the normal level so this mechanism is known as the renin angiotensin system and it is mainly or mainly operated by the kidney when we see the aldosterone system aldosterone system it is known as the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism when there is any fall in the blood pressure fall in tissue perfusion in adrenal cortex when fall in tissue perfusion in adrenal cortex stimulation of adrenal cortex to release the aldosterone when the aldosterone secreted the level of aldosterone in the blood increases when level of aldosterone in the blood increases there is the increased reabsorption of the water and electrolyte increase reabsorption of water and electrolyte it causes the rise in the extracellular fluid and rise in the blood volume when the rise in extracellular fluid volume and the rise in blood volume occurs there is the rise in the blood pressure towards the normal level so the aldosterone the, the hormone it is secreted by the adrenal cortex when the perfusion perfusion in the adrenal cortex is less and these aldosterone it increases the absorption of water and electrolyte and then there is a rise in extracellular fluid volume and the blood volume and blood pressure comes toward the normal level when we see whole indirect mechanism the indirect mechanism when there is decrease in the blood pressure stimulation of juxtaglomerular apparatus juxtaglomerular apparatus secretes the renin the renin convert the angiotensinogen in liver into the angiotensin 1 angiotensin 1 then in the lung act due to the presence of the angiotensin converting enzyme convert the angiotensin 1 into the angiotensin 2 then angiotensin 2 in the presence of the angiotensin tensinase convert angiotensin 2 into the 3 and the 4 now the we know that angiotensin 2 it is a potent vasoconstrictor when it is a potent vasoconstrictor it it increases the blood pressure 
Angiotensin 2 has the three main functions. First is the vasoconstriction. Second is the it activate the adrenal cortex and when it activate the adrenal cortex it it allows the adrenal cortex to secrete the aldosterone and third one is the uh, retention of the salt and water. When vasoconstriction is there, increase in the blood pressure, blood pressure come toward the normal level. When we see the aldosterone mechanism, adrenal cortex, it is stimulated, adrenal cortex is stimulated because of the less blood supply to the adrenal cortex when less blood supply to the adrenal cortex is there and so the adrenal cortex uh, it adrenal cortex secretes the aldosterone when the ald aldosterone is secreted this causes the reabsorption of water and the sodium increase in extracellular fluid volume and increase in the blood volume this both factor causes the uh, causes the increase in the blood pressure or convert the blood pressure toward the normal level. When we talk about the osmoreceptors ADH mechanism, any fall of blood pressure due to hypovolemia result in rise in plasma osmolality. When there is rise in plasma osmolarity, stimulation of the osmoreceptors which is present in the hypothalamus. When the osmoreceptors in hypothalamus are stimulated, it stimulates the thrust center or the posterior pituitary. When the thrust centers are stimulated, there is the increased water intake. When increased water intake is there, increased blood volume, increased blood volume increases the blood pressure. When the posterior pituitary is stimulated, there is the secretion of the ADH, antidiuretic hormone. When antidiuretic hormone or the vasopressin is secre secreted, there is the increased water reabsorption. When increased water reabsorption increases in the extracellular fluid volume and the increase in the blood volume. This causes the increase in the blood pressure or restore the blood pressure toward the normal level. When we talk about the atrial natriuretic peptide mechanism, any rise of blood pressure due to rise of plasma volume initiate this mechanism in which reabsorption of sodium and water are controlled by the kidney and thus blood pressure is maintained. Rise in the plasma volume the, causes the increase in the venous return. When the venous return is increased, stimulation of the stretch receptor present in the atria due to overstretching. Secretion of atrial natriuretic peptide by the atrial cells. These natriuretic peptides act on the renal tubules. It causes the decreased reabsorption of sodium and water. So, decreased reabsorption of sodium and water is there. More and more excretion of sodium and water. Decreased plasma volume and decreased plasma volume is there so blood pressure to decreases and blood pressure uh, comes toward the normal level atrial natriuretic peptide it decreases the blood pressure this is all about the long-term regulation of the blood pressure. So, long-term regulation of the blood pressure, it is by the direct mechanism, indirect mechanism. Direct mechanism, renal body fluid feedback mechanism, indirect mechanism, renin angiotensin system, aldosterone system.
or by the osmoreceptor ADH mechanism, atrial natriuretric peptide mechanism. Now we we see the how the blood pressure it is regulated by the hormones. There are the there are the various hormone which increases or decreases the blood pressure when the when when there there is the vasoconstriction the arterial blood pressure it increases when there is the vasodilatation arterial blood pressure decreases now the hormones which increases the arterial blood pressures are adrenaline non adrenaline thyroxine aldosterone vasopressin angiotensin serotonin these all have the vasoconstrictor effect and increases the blood pressure now the hormones which decreases the arterial blood pressure vasoactive intestinal polypeptides bradykinin prostaglandins histamine acetylcholine atrial natriuretic peptide brain natriuretic peptide c type natriuretic peptide so these are the hormone which increases or decreases the blood pressure now we talk about the local mechanism for the regulation of blood pressure local mechanism regulate blood pressure by vasoconstriction and the vasodilatation local vasoconstriction also known as the endothelium drive constructing factors these are derived from vascular endothelium common endothelium driving construct constructing factors are the ET1 ET2 ET3 these all are the produced by the stretching of blood vessel and when there is the stretching of blood vessel it causes the vasoconstriction when the vasoconstriction is there increase in the blood pressure when we see the flow chart of the regulation of blood pressure by local mechanism due to stretching of blood vessel when there is the stretching of blood vessel endothelians are produced this activate the phospholipase and these phospholipase causes the act, activate the prostacycline and thromboxane A2 it constrict the blood vessels and once the blood vessel is constricted there is increased in the extracellular fluid volume and the blood volume and increased in the blood pressure vasodilators carbon monoxide lactate hydrogen ions and adenosines when we talk about the vasodilators of endothelial origin these are the nit nitroxides no3 no nitrosonium ions nitroxyl ions so these vasodilator it decreases the blood pressure and whenever there is increase in the blood pressure these vasodilator it causes the vasodilatation and decreases the blood um, blood pressure to the some amounts so this is all for the regulation of the blood pressure when we conclude the regulation of the blood pressure rapid control of arterial pressure begins with life saving measures of the nervous reflex this nervous reflex continues with sustaining characteristic of intermediate pressure control and finally is stabilized at long term pressure level by the renal body fluid feedback mechanism and the renin angiotensin system so the regulation of the arterial blood pressure is the very very important because whenever there is increase in the blood pressure it doesn't remain increased throughout the life if it remain increases then the pathological condition is develop so to control the blood pressure is very important in all this the control of blood pressure by the long term regulation of the blood pressure or the long term mechanism is very important because 
when all the nervous mechanism intermediate mechanisms they fails or they act less then this long term mechanism it activate and it remains for days to year so this is all for today's lecture thank you